male relative of woman arrested after her body was found in shallow grave in Glengough, St. Catherine. Police arrested a male relative of a St. Catherine woman after her body was found in a shallow grave near her home in Glengough, St. Catherine. Dead is Lisa Gay Conway of retreat in Glengough. Lisa Gay has been missing since last month. Head of the St. Catherine North Police Superintendent Holton Nicholson said Lisa Gay's adopted brother reportedly confessed to police about inf being involved in her disappearance and led officers to the grave. Teenagers snapped with several charges after alleged shootout with police. Two teenagers have been snapped with charges under the Firearms Act after they reportedly engaged lawmen in a shootout in the intersection of 4th Avenue and 1st Street in Newport West, Kingston in August. Charged with two counts of shooting with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon, using a firearm to commit a felony, and possession of unauthorized ammunition, or 19 years old, Jaheim Webb, otherwise called home, and Tariq Grimmond, both of Kingston 13 addresses. Reports are that about 10.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 15, 2024, Webb and Ryman allegedly committed a robbery on Lynchard Road in Kingston. According to the police, the vehicle in which they were traveling, it was spotted and the driver of the motor vehicle was signaled to stop, however, he disobeyed. The police said the vehicle was pursued and the teens opened fire at the lawmen. After the shooting subsided, it was discovered that Webb and Ryman escaped, leaving the vehicle behind, the police noted. On Sunday, October 6, an operation was carried out during which both teens were apprehended. They were charged after a question and answer session in the presence of their attorney on Monday, October 7. Their court date is being finalized. Three wanted men among 230 arrested by the St. Catherine South Police in third quarter. Over 230 people, including three wanted men, were arrested by the St. Catherine South Police in the third quarter of this year. Head of the division, Deputy Superintendent Michael Campbell, said the wanted men were held in relation to gang affiliation and murder cases. DSP Campbell said the police continue efforts to dismantle gangs in the division. He added that for the quarter, over 40 convictions were secured. We also had some significant arrests. 235 persons were arrested for minor to major crimes. And we also apprehended three wanted persons in the quarter. These persons are Jaden Wilson, O.C. Jaber. He's from the Gregor Park era, and he's charged with possession of prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, murder, wounding with intent, illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of ammunition. There's another gang leader by the name of Paul Euland, O.C. Inaman. He's from the Central Village Zone, leader of a gang in the Little Lane era. He has been wanted as well, so he too was apprehended in the quarter and is charged for prohibited weapon ammunition and, and being a gang leader as well under the anti-gang legislation. And another person who was also wanted was J.J. and Dennis O.C. J.J. He was wanted for wounding with intent and he has been before the court for that. We have been focusing on gangs. In fact, there are 14 gangs that are under active investigations in the division. And this is just showing you some of them and where they're from. The Ola Bay, Bay here, the Gregor Park, Waterford, Central Village, Elba Compound, uh, Gregor Park. So these are some of the areas that we have some of the gangs that have been contributing to the crimes in the division. So we have been targeting the members of these gangs um, to displace and dismantle, disrupt as best as we possibly can. Right. And as I indicated, there are 14 of them that we are focusing on right now. So the gangs are contributing significantly to what is happening in the division. And our strategy is to impact them as best as we possibly can. Former Indicom investigator denies knowledge of JDF helicopter video at Keeks Clark's house. Tanish Bistam Banton, a former chief investigator of the Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom, was accused on Monday of being untruthful when she denied having knowledge of a Jamaica Defense Force JDF helicopter capturing video footage of certain events at 18 Kirkland Close in St. Andrew in the wee hours of May 27, 2010, when accountant Key Clark was shot dead by soldiers. Wisdom Banton was giving evidence in the murder trial of three JDF soldiers who are being tried in relation to the shooting death of Clark. The three soldiers are Lance Corporals Greg Tinglin and Odell Buckley, as well as Private Arnold Henry. Clark was shot dead inside his master bedroom at his 18 Kirkland Close house 
during a police major operation aimed at capturing then fugitive Christopher Duduskoke, who was wanted by the United States law enforcement agents. It was alleged that Koch and about seven of his cronies were hiding from the security forces in Clark's basement. The armed men, it has been further alleged, challenged the security forces and in a gun battle, during which Koch escaped in a heavily first aid arrow to the back of the property, where Clark, where Clark lived at the time with his wife and teenage daughter. It is said that certain events surrounding what happened, that alleged gunmen and security forces were videotaped from a JDF helicopter that was hovering about the premises. During cross-examination Monday, King's counsel Valerie Robertson, the attorney representing Lance Corporal Tingling, pressed the witness insisting that in her role as investigator and the people responsible for putting the file together, she must have had knowledge of the videotape. However, Wisdom Banton insisted that was not so. I did not receive any information about any helicopter and I did not view any helicopter footage, she told Nita Robertson. Nita Robertson said, Madam, I am going to suggest to you that you are not being honest when you say you don't have any knowledge about helicopter video tape. What do you say to that? I am being honest, the former Indicom investigator said in response. Nita Robertson continued, I am also going to suggest to you that as a senior investigator, you were not being honest when you said that you did not provide material about a video tape from a helicopter with respect to your report on this matter. You said you know nothing about it and I am saying to you, you submitted the information for the report to be done. The senior attorney pressed Wisdom Bantam to tell the jury and presiding judge, Justice Dale Palmer, about a letter that was addressed to the former commissioner of Indicom, Terence Williams, that she was instructed to attach to the Keats Clark file. This letter you said was addressed to Mr. Williams, to which things were attached. Did you read those things that were attached? What was your purpose of being handed this letter by Mr. Williams, Nita Robertson Probe? The former investigator said the instruction she received was to place the documents on file. She said that all she knew about it was that the contents were documents for a matter being investigated by Indicom. She told the court that the files were kept by her on list in case where Williams asked for it and she would hand it over to him. The files included correspondences from Williams that was addressed to him and received by him. She said too that there were other members of the Indicom staff who submitted materials to the police to be placed on the file. Three persons were not under my control or this direction. We all acted under the directions of Mr. Williams, she noted. She was asked by Nita Robertson if she went inside Clark's house after he was killed and the former investigator said yes. Nita Robertson also asked her if she examined the surroundings at the premises inside and out. Wisdom Banton's response was, No, ma'am, that was not my role. I went there because I was asked to accompany the chief forensic examiner of Indicom. She admitted that if she was aware that video footage existed, it would have been useful to her investigation. She said she did not recall seeing any letter or document from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions that the Army had a video of which was transparent on the ground of May 27, 2010. Wisdom Banton said she did not view medical reports from four soldiers who were reportedly injured by gunshots. In fact, she said she was not aware that four soldiers were shot. She pointed out that if that information had arised during her investigation, it would have been more important to her. She said that the ballistic reports pointing to the firearm from which the soldiers received their injuries and how they were shot would have been important for her investigation. At the same time, she reminded the jury that she took her instructions directly from Williams. As investigators, we don't make decisions. We just gather information and put them in a report. Instructions on the gathering of the information comes directly from Mr. Williams, who would have said, collect X and collect Y. I did not make any personal or professional decision as to what needed to be collected. I only gathered what Mr. Williams told me to gather. It was my very first Indicom matter. It was my very first fatal matter. Wisdom Banton also told the court that she did not give instruction for Clark's last firearm to be submitted to the ballistics laboratory for inspection. I did not submit any firearm to the ballistics lab. I had no knowledge that his firearm was connected with the incident. Defense attorneys for the soldiers on trial have reported that Clark possibly pointed his firearm at the security forces and fired the weapon. The trial continues. Remember to subscribe, like, share, 
and click the notification bell for daily updates.